Hey guys, it's Adrian Ruby HA here bringing you a new video. Alright, so this is my first main video of 2020. I did a video on a USPS mail sensor back in December. And this one hopefully will expand a little bit more on that and not only cover USPS but also cover UPS and FedEx as well. I'm not going to lie to you, this was a, a little bit strenuous to get it set up, but I think I got it all figured out. And hopefully I've got it put together in this video where I'm not going to confuse everybody. Nonetheless, any questions you guys might have, hit me up in the comments below and I will definitely see what I can do to get you going in the right direction. Let's check it out. Here's the GitHub page for this mail sensor. But as you can see here, there's quite a bit to setting this up and making sure everything is working the way you want it to. We're going to cover everything we can here in this video and hopefully get you going in the right track. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. For starters, if you're coming from the last video that I did, we're going to disable that uh, mail sensor that we set up last time because this one is a totally new setup. Once we do that, we're going to go over uh, the prerequisites that we need to obviously uh, have this working the way we want it to. Uh, once that's done, then we will install and configure sensors. And lastly, uh, we're just going to take a look at and see what that looks like in action. So let's get started. If you didn't follow along with the previous video where we set up the mail sensor uh, for USPS, then you can kind of skip this step and move on to the next one. If so, we're going to go through and we're going to stop that service that we created that will go out and check for uh, USPS in our mail folder. And then of course we also want to go in and uh, comment out the package that we added to our configuration.yaml file. Once we do that, we'll probably jump over to Home Assistant and just restart for those changes to take effect. We want to make sure that it's completely out of the system before we start setting up this new sensor. Alright, so for prerequisites, for the most part these are pretty obvious. You have to have signed up for USPS informed delivery. You also have to sign up for FedEx Delivery Manager, and then of course you want to also sign up for UPS My Choice. That's kind of obvious seeing as how that's what we were trying to monitor here uh, for our sensors. Lastly, you need to make sure that Image Magic is installed wherever you have Home Assistant installed. So if you're running it in Docker, you'll have to do a Docker exec command to install Image Magic. If you're running this just on a Linux box or Raspberry Pi, you should be able to install it using apt-git. For me, I'm running mine in Docker, so I'm going to do my docker exec command to get to the command prompt. And then from there I can do an apk add image magic. And I already have it installed, so you'll notice that it doesn't do a full install here, but if this was a new install, you would go through and actually do the full install here. Once all that's done, we're ready to move on to that next step. As you can see here, there are three main directories that we need to move over into our uh, Home Assistant configuration. Alright, for starters, we're going to clone that GitHub repository. So we'll do a sudo git clone and then the path to that .git file. And I'll have this all in the description below. I dumped everything in my home directory and then I can kind of move it around where I need to from there. For starters, we're going to move into the includes directory. We're going to copy this package directory over into our home assistant configuration slash includes directory. And if you don't have one, you can create the includes directory now. Next, we're going to move into the www directory and copy the mail and packages directory over into our home assistant configuration slash www directory. And 
And lastly, then we're going to move into the custom components directory. And then we'll move the mail and packages directory over into our custom components directory inside of our Home Assistant configuration as well. All right, as I said before, this took me a while to try to figure out exactly what all needs to be done for this to work properly. I feel like the GitHub page, because I know the guys that have created all this stuff are a little bit busy. I think they've gotten behind on the documentation. Uh, and so it took me a while to exactly figure out what needed to be done. But in order for this to work properly, as long as you follow the steps in my video, it should get you where you need to be. All right, so inside the includes directory uh, slash packages, we're going to edit the mail and packages.yaml file. And there's a section down here where it talks about sensors. We're going to comment this out because it's no longer needed. This is from uh, the original setup and they've kind of added some additional features here that make this part obsolete. Once we have that commented out, we'll go ahead and save it. Next, let's move into the custom components directory. And from here, there's one file that's missing, and that is the camera.py. So we're going to jump over to this particular GitHub page, and I'll have the link in the description below. But we're going to copy this and paste it uh, into a new camera.py file inside that custom components directory. So I'll highlight it here to a copy. Go ahead and create a new file called camera.py. Now before I close this out, we're going to go and make one minor change towards the top of this file. Where it lists the default path, since I'm running my Home Assistant in a Docker container, I need to change that uh, to be slash config slash www slash mail and packages. So I'll make that change here. Once I've done that, then I can go ahead and save it. Uh, now let's jump over to our uh, configuration.yaml file, and we're going to add in the uh, package for this new packages directory that we added earlier. Once we have that in there, we'll go ahead and save it. But now we're ready to jump over to Home Assistant uh, to the web interface here, and we'll do a check config real quick, and then restart Home Assistant for the changes to take effect. We'll give that a second to come back up. Uh, once we do, then we're able to go into integrations on the web interface here. And you should have a new entry when you click on that plus down at the bottom for mail and packages. And this is where you're going to put on all the information that will point to where your uh, informed delivery emails go as well as your FedEx and your UPS emails as well. I have all mine going to a, a, a Gmail account, so I'm going to put everything in here that point to that Gmail account. Down at the bottom, make sure you put the correct path for your mail and packages. So because I'm using a Docker container, mine will be slash config slash www slash mail and packages. Once we have all that in there, go ahead and hit submit. All right, so now that we have all that done, we're pretty much ready to go. We need to make one more change, and that's to edit our ui-loveless.yaml file here to add in the new loveless card that will make it look all nice and pretty on our web interface. So, of course, the type is JS, and the URL, this will be uh, the path to the JS file that is in our www directory. And you can copy all this from the GitHub page. I'll also have it in the description below. But once we have all this in there and lined up correctly, 
uh, our new mail and packages uh, custom levels card will be working as we need it to. Go ahead and save it. And then of course we're going to jump over to Home Assistant one last time in the web interface here. We'll do a check config and then we can reload location and customizations for it to pick up these new changes. Once we have all that, uh, we're ready to move on to that last step. All right, so uh, of course, as you can see here, here is the uh, clip from the uh, new Loveless interface that I have set up. And it shows that I had five pieces of mail delivered today, as well as no packages were gonna be delivered. So. Uh, it shows a five by the mail. Everything else shows zero because I have no packages being delivered. Um, there is a, uh, a rotating GIF that'll go through all the different pieces of mail that are being delivered, just as uh, the previous mail sensor that we set up before. And then of course, even down at the bottom, you can see that it shows uh, the last time that this sensor went out and checked for mail. I think it checks like every 10 minutes or so, something like that. But very awesome. I love this little setup. I love how it shows everything there. In fact, where it says mail, USPS, uh, UPS, and FedEx, you can click on those and it will take you to the login page for that mail. So that's pretty cool too. But uh, that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy setup and it got a little bit confusing for me. Like I said, I, uh, I think they're a little bit uh, outdated on the documentation. I totally understand because uh, we all know how my GitHub page is and it's currently out of date and trying to find time to do all that is a nightmare. So I uh, can totally understand uh, where they're coming from. I feel like this is probably not ready for uh, full production just yet, but definitely feel like it's getting close. Uh, I love this setup again. I think this is definitely headed in the right direction. Uh, and I feel that before too long, it will be in the um, Home Assistant, uh, you know, main install. Nonetheless, uh, let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course for starters, uh, because we were already running the older USPS mail sensor that I set up back in December, we disabled that. Uh, then we of course went over prerequisites uh, that were kind of obvious, you know, uh, U UPS My Choice, FedEx uh, delivery, and uh, USPS uh, inform delivery, all that stuff has to be uh, set up in order for you to even get this information. Uh, once we did that, we uh, installed the uh, whole, all the sensors and went through the full install on how we needed to set all that up. Uh, and then lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. Um, again, like I said, if you have any questions or I got really confusing on this, please let me know and I will see what I can do to get you uh, going in the right direction. Anything I might have missed, uh, let me know. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.